Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Yeah, Jonathan, Alan. Hey, hey great to see you guys again. Kirby, yeah, always a pleasure, pleasure to see you whenever I'm in New York. Of course, thank you. You know, you I'm going. excited to be back. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, excited about the Made Measure program. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot of new things that we've been working on. Maybe I'll give you a quick yeah, little please. show. This you should try on because this really is pretty unique. This is, you know, taking our tailoring and applying it to lifestyle mm. of our customers. This is actually made of a knit fabric. And if you, if I hold this and you just uh, fold your arms, just mm -hmm. fold your arms, you'll see how it yeah. moves. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, hand tailoring something which we, we make right in the back here of this knitted, it's like a knitted sweater. Yeah. But, you know, you could wear this with a tie, you could wear mm -hmm. it without a tie, you can wear it with jeans. You know, yeah. if you had to go to a business meeting these days, you probably, you know, could yeah, pull that off with a dark gray. Great for like a trip to Paris, you yeah. know, kind of a colder winter month. Exactly. You know, but casual, I mean, one of the things I'm reminded is that, you know, you know, a gentleman really is always wearing a jacket of some sorts. And, you know, the yeah. more I, I dress formally, the more I, I you know, don't like to be without something covering pockets. my shoulders and pockets and pockets yep. but it doesn't have to be you know a business jacket right it doesn't have to be a formal or even or an odd jacket for that right. matter yeah so we've now been making these for a couple years there people just love them and they live in them mm. i sometimes take the bus out to southampton and i fold it up and use it as a pillow really <laughs> yes okay well this is great it's a little oh. expensive for a pillow but <laughs> it's uh, hey well you know you get the most out of your garments exactly <laughs> Exactly. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, so great to see nice you here see you again. in Texas. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm at the Alan Flesser Trunk Show. I'm here with Jonathan Sigmund. Jonathan, thank you so much uh, Good to be you know, for coming down. And, um, you know, whenever we were filming the uh, personal consultation with Alan Flesser, I mean, one of the things that I enjoyed seeing was just the great variety of garments that Alan and you guys have designed. I mean, Alan Flesser, of course, we all know him as, you know, the author of uh, Dressing the Man, but he's also a very talented designer and has come up with a lot of pieces uh, that really depart from just the classic, you know, suit and jacket that, you know, of course, everyone knows about. And so the slack jacket was something that I found particularly interesting, and I think that there were a lot of people in the video that also uh, picked up on the slack jacket. So I thought we'd just talk a little bit more about this a really interesting piece that you guys have. That sounds great. Uh, I'm glad you noticed it. I'm glad you liked it. You know, the business is 34 years old at this point. We've been making suits and jackets and the like for uh, over three decades. Yeah. And, you know, we like really comfortable, really soft clothing. So anything that we can do that brings more of that into mm -hmm. the tailored clothing world, we're pretty excited yeah. about. And it really is about the lifestyle. I mean, you know, of course, you know, during the week, a lot of us were wearing a suit and tie. You know, but Alan really kind of preaches the lifestyle aspect of taking that tailored kind of bespoke clothing element, you know, beyond just what you wear to the office. And the slack jacket really, I felt like was a great example of that. For sure. But it's also, especially these days, something you can wear to the office in a lot of places anyway. Yeah, so wearing it on the weekend and on evenings, it's great because it's knitted, it moves like a sweater, it's extremely comfortable. But with um, kind of the deformalization of a lot of offices these days, it's really quite uh, suitable and appropriate okay. in a lot of office yeah. environments. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's try a couple on. See yeah, what please. Think. Thank you. So this was our first and by far the most popular. It's a wool and cotton knit. So if you move your arms like this, mm -hmm. you know it feels like a sweater because it's knitted. Uh, it's extremely mm -hmm. comfortable, extremely lightweight. Uh, it doesn't wrinkle. Alan likes to say that when he goes out to Southampton on the bus and he's wearing it, he takes it off and rolls it up like a pillow. And then when he's done, when he gets there, he just throws it back on. Mm. And you would never know because it absolutely does not wrinkle at all. But it's a really interesting piece because it's kind of based on a 50s model. Um, if you look at an old parallel arts catalog from okay. the 1950s, you'll see quite a few things that look roughly similar to this. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. It's, you could say it's a little bit more casual. We generally cut it with two lower slash pockets like this, so it's really, really easy to get your hands in your pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, guys need pockets, you know. We don't have, generally we don't have a purse or don't have anything like that that we're carrying with yeah. us. So for your keys, your change, your wallet, um, even when you're <clears throat> being a little bit more casual, 
you know, you want to wear a jacket or you want to have some you want to have something that you can put yeah. your things in. So the collar is cut so that you can wear it down. I guess it's a little bit more uh, yeah, of, a, it's, of a conservative aesthetic. But what I also like about this is, you know, if it's cold or it's the winter time, or if you just want to, you know, have a little bit more kind of flair, you can also pop it up and it you know, it stands up in a way that a normal jacket collar never would. Without a doubt. If you're wearing it, you know, a little bit more formal, it's probably better to leave the collar down like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just a so slightly like different kind of interesting now. piece. But when you're wearing it separately or outside or without a tie, it, you know, we like to pop the collar and it be just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more casual feeling. Like you just threw it on and don't care so much yeah. about it. So what type of client do you make this for? Sure. So it's only a bespoke piece. Mm -hmm. um, can't really work with these knitted cloths in factories, unfortunately. So we only make it in shop in New York. Um, and we make it for people who are, um, you know, like I said, who are in more casual offices and mm -hmm. want something that's just incredibly comfortable that they can throw on that's a little bit different from the, from the standard jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have a lot of folks who are uh, not really working anymore and just want something comfortable to wear on the weekend or at yeah. home uh, or when they're traveling, yeah. especially. It's a wonderful it's a travel, travel piece. piece. Um, so something that can go in a lot of different settings and again just be incredibly comfortable to wear. Yeah. Wasn't you, you were saying how you, you know, took a, a trip to Paris and this was the only jacket you took? Right. Last year actually for my birthday I went to Paris for about 10 days, took one tailored piece and it was this one. Wore it to nice restaurants, wore it out and about just on the streets, on walking and you know it serves pretty much every purpose you can throw at it for a tailored yeah. clothing piece. But we do have a few other ones. Yeah, let me see them because I think I'd like to have something like this made. I mean, it's really a gap in my wardrobe. So this one is a this one is a corduroy, hmm. but again, it has about two percent elastane in it. So it's not knitted; it's just a regular woven corduroy woven with elastane. So heavier than the, a little the bit heavier. Arm. Yeah, about an ounce, two ounces heavier. If you move your arms forward like that, it still does have some of that stretch. Mm -hmm. Not quite the same. You know, it's not quite the sweater feel but we want to make things with a little bit of stretch in this model. Yeah. Um, so it's important that even though we chose a corduroy, we chose one that had a little bit of give to it. It's so a it's, a little, it's a little bit more rustic. It's a mm -hmm. really, really beautiful garment. You may not wear it as much in an office as you would that navy one. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're talking really, about a great kind of fall piece. Absolutely. Outside, great with jeans, hiking, great with like cavalry twill, mm -hmm. trousers, yeah. uh, tan pants, anything like that. Um, yeah, a really great outdoorsy piece. And do you just do this in the brown, or do you have other color, colors of the corduroy? Whole, yeah, whole color range. Okay. So if you take it off, we'll take a look at the construction inside. We make these almost completely unconstructed. So uh, unless somebody needs it, a very, very thin or no shoulder pad whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There's no canvas, um, and usually just half lined. So it's a little bit more breathable in the back, a little bit more knockabout. Uh, you know, we want it to feel like a sweater, so we don't really want any of that construction inside to. Uh, to give it unnecessary shape. Yeah, but still done by hand. I mean, it's got yeah. You know, they're all all those bespoke details. All completely that you would bespoke, expect. made in our workshop. Oh, that's beautiful. Show you one more. So this one you can't really put on. It's a client's garment. It's going to okay. be a little big. Um, but again, it's the same as that navy one in that it's a knitted fabric. It's mm -hmm. a wool and cotton blend. This one's a little bit heavier. Uh, this is just the first uh, the first mock up. Um, first basted fitting is going to come in soon. Um, with a silk lining, again, only half. Beautiful. Haven't, tri haven't piped the edges yet. Um, and it's got it's, this two-tone kind of almost reversible. Yeah, it's really interesting. It is, it is a borderline reversible fabric. You know, you wouldn't put this on the outside, but it's great that when you make something without a full lining, that when you take it off, throw it over a chair or something like that, you see a little bit more visual interest to it. This one's just a little bit heavier. You can see it has this kind of interesting texture in the weave. Mm -hmm. It's a couple ounces heavier than that navy one, yeah. so it's more of a late fall, winter, mm -hmm. early spring type of But it of still garment. has that stretch to it. That's so much stretch. So it's when, you, when you're wearing it, when you're moving, it feels incredibly comfortable. Yeah, that's great. Let me yeah. try the, um, the navy one on again. Because this is, I mean, again, a kind of a gap that I have in the wardrobe. I mean, I've got a lot of really nice formal pieces. You know, I've got a few odd jackets. But I don't really have like kind of a Saturday afternoon, just kind of throw it over something piece. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you notice that that's really what it's for because we think it does, you know, serve so many purposes. Like I said, just like what you're wearing right now, but also on the weekend. Yeah, and, and without night. a tie, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Go, you know, going out to dinner, um, you know, throw it on with a brown, uh, brown crew neck or a charcoal crew neck underneath it. T-shirt, anything yeah. like so that. So you'd even wear it over a T-shirt or just a, without like a, a regular, yeah. you know, cotton polo. Yeah. Okay. 
That's great. Made with button cuffs. Yeah, two buttons. Uh, we do what's called a turn back cuff. So there isn't lining on the bottom three inches or so. Okay. So if you're wearing a t-shirt, if you're wearing a sweater, and you just want to peel the cuff back to be a little bit yeah. more casual, a little bit more sporty, yeah. you don't have the lining necessarily that you'd have on a regular jacket. Okay. Which we think is pretty interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Usually only two buttons, obviously working buttonholes. Uh, part of the reason that makes it a little bit more formal uh, or a little bit more like a jacket is these double side vents back here. Mm -hmm. A traditional shirt jacket generally doesn't have that and generally mm -hmm. is a little bit shorter. Uh, and it's completely unconstructed. You know, there's nothing in the shoulder, there's no canvas, uh, it's just the cloth and a little bit of lining. So, Which probably makes it more difficult to work with. It's, uh, unfortunately, that's why we can only make it bespoke yeah. because it is so difficult to work with. Factories yeah. don't want to touch a knitted garment like that. Yeah. Um, but it is a beautiful piece for those people who are interested in bespoke. Yeah, beautiful. Well, gosh, yeah, I'd love to have one made up. So let's let's do one of these. Yeah, that sounds perfect. I think you're going to love it. Yeah, and you know this fabric. I mean, the navy. Again, you know, if I'm going to have one piece, I always start with kind of the most versatile. I think that's wise because not only can you wear it as we've said before with a tie, with gray pants like that, you can wear it essentially as an alternative navy blazer. Um, but it's just a great color for you. It's yeah. the same conversation we had about that suit, you know, for your, your coloring. This is a really beautiful navy. It's dark enough that it suits you because mm -hmm. you are high contrast, but it has a bit of a pop to it. Uh, and it's just a classic, uh, a classic color that you can wear in a lot of ways. Yeah. So I think it's smart to choose something that's the most versatile. Yeah. Great. Well, Jonathan, that's right. exciting. Let's get to it. Yeah, thank you. So I'm in the office today with Jonathan Sigmund from Allen Flesser. Jonathan, hey, thank you so nice much you. for coming to Dallas. We've got the first fitting uh, for the custom slack jacket that uh, we were, or I was measured for back in Houston at the trunk show there. Yep. And so here we are. This is the actual piece, and uh, this is the next step in the Allen Flesser kind of custom process. Yeah, second step. So as you said, we measured you. We, um, we showed you the cloths. You selected one. Um, that's obviously the first step in any custom ordering process. Uh, this is the basted fitting, so in a few minutes we're going to try this on. So Jonathan, whenever we were in Houston, you were mentioning how the slack jacket is something that's only offered custom. Right, yeah. Just because we mainly make it in this, uh, or a similar jersey, kind of knitted cloth. Yeah. So this is a wool and cotton knit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got four-way stretch, obviously. Um, and it's just extremely difficult um, to deal with uh, when you're making things either yeah. made to measure or custom. And Alan, of course, has such a high standard for how he wants his garments to fit. I mean, that is, I think, one of the reasons you go to Alan Flesser is, again, his background, um, you know, really lends itself to, you know, he's got a very specific idea and position in terms of what he wants. And so I, I suppose a garment like this that's more, more prone to kind of shifting throughout that making process uh, just requires a little bit of extra attention. It does. And even though, like we said, it's a little counterintuitive, even though it's essentially, uh, we like to think of it as a tailored sweater. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's a little bit easier. It's cut just a little bit looser. Um, still has a really high armhole, full chest, full blades for that range of motion. Um, but even though it is an easier garment, it requires so much effort to make um, and so much attention and detail through the fitting and the sewing process that, um, yeah, you know, we have very high standards in all of our clothes. and. Uh, no less when it comes yep. to casual wear. Yep, so you do the basic fitting here. Anyway, absolutely beautiful jacket. And, you know, again, I guess we're starting to see some of these details come together that really make this piece unique. Yeah, so, you know, we always, uh, when it comes to this fabric, we always half line it or even a little bit less. Primarily because since it is a knit, mm -hmm. you, you really want to be able to take advantage of that stretch. So if you fully line the back, then you you know, when it. you move your arms, when you move around, uh, you lose a lot of the give, which is uh, a large you know, large kind value of part of the jacket. Um, this is a reversible cloth, so it has this kind of brighter blue on the inside. Um, and we take that into account when we're choosing the lining. Um, so it's a beautiful you know, lining. It, yeah, if you notice the lining, it also has kind of a light or brighter blue mm -hmm. uh, diamond motif. So we want something that picks up the navy of the face and it picks up the light blue of the reverse yeah. side also. And I love the pop of this. I mean, it's almost it's a, almost a burgundy, but it almost looks like it's got a little bit of fuchsia almost yeah, we, in it. We love burgundy. We love red and blue together, yeah. and we think it's a great piece. We yeah. use this one pretty often. And does this have a little bit of an extra of a gusset built in again to account for that it does. stretch yeah. and the movability? So again, everything is designed to make this as comfortable as possible and take advantage of the nature of the cloth. Yeah, and it really is a piece for travel, and so it needs to be something that you know you can pull out of your bag put it on and it looks great, take it off, throw it back in your, your travel bag. Without a doubt. I came in in a duffel bag about 30 minutes ago from New York, about four and a half hours on the flight, um, packed it up last night, and as you can see, there's 
basically no wrinkles. Yeah. You know, a cloth like this, a knitted cloth, is really not going to wrinkle at all. So you can throw it in your bag, you can use it as a pillow. Um, it's the only piece I took on a long trip to Paris uh, in the last winter. Wore it for dinners, wore it out, wore it around the city. Um, it's so versatile and so comfortable that, uh, you know, it's kind of a do anything, go anywhere piece that, you know, is, yeah. is what we're focusing on. Yeah, these days. Well, I travel a lot, so I can't wait to uh, actually be able to wear this piece. So without further ado, let's try it on. Great. All right, so here we go. Beautiful. All right. How's it feel? Feels great. I mean, this is, I mean, this is what I like about this piece. Right. Is very seldomly can you find a casual piece that can still look good with like a shirt and tie. Right, for sure. What we like about this jacket, again, there's several really key things besides obviously the cloth. Mm -hmm. um, we love the pockets. If you want a travel jacket or just something you can take anywhere, do anything in, it should be really, really easy to access the pockets. Um, you know, there's obviously a little bit of a stronger pocketing in there to make up for the stretch knit, mm -hmm. but no flaps, just a simple slash pocket, really comfortable, really easy access for your arms. Um, you know, we like our somewhat curved breast pocket shape. It's really interesting patch pocket design. Um, we think it works quite well with this model jacket. Yeah. Um, this, uh, it's kind of like a shirt collar. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a little bit different. It's a non-traditional jacket collar. So it obviously gives a little bit of a casual element to it. Yeah. You know, the front is straight. It's going to be a four button front rather than a traditional jacket shape. So it's a type of cloth or it's a type of jacket that um, can be worn like this with a suit mm -hmm. and tie. It's got a lining in the sleeve, unlike some slack jackets yeah. or some other uh, safari style jackets mm -hmm. that would get hung up on a, on a sweater or a shirt. So really easy to slide on and off. It's a dressy enough cloth that uh, if you wanted to wear it with gray slacks and a tie like this, mm -hmm. um, you would, you know, it would perform or it would pair quite well. Um, but it's also you could also wear it with something like this, you know, yeah. jeans and a sweater um, and a belt, and, mm -hmm. and it'd be equal equally versatile. Yeah, and the lining dresses it up uh, also for sure. Honestly. Yeah, I mean I, because you know even if you're, I mean you're not going to wear this thing totally buttoned all the time, right. and so you're going to. Catch yeah, some you're gonna flashes around, of you know, the you're lining. Gonna sit down, it's going to come out, and yeah, you're right. It does dress it up quite a bit, especially with that silky finish. Yeah, and it kind of um, gives it a little bit of a bespoke. I mean, definitely signals that this is a custom garment for sure. Um, one more thing, I actually like what I'm doing now. We make a lot of our uh, separate jackets with turn back cuffs. Okay. So it's basted closed at the moment, but. Um, when you have a buttonhole, if you want, if you're wearing a sweater, if you're wearing something that's not a dressy shirt, mm -hmm. um, you can turn that back and it'd be just a little bit of a more sporty finish. And so the facing, I guess, goes yeah, up right. farther so, so that whenever you turn it back, you don't reveal the lining. Exactly, yeah. So we cut the lining to stop about three and a half inches or so from the base of the sleeve. So okay. when you turn it back, all you see is a little bit more lining. Yeah. Obviously, nice. the buttonholes are all going to be handmade, hand, hand sewn. Mm -hmm. um, so it's also kind of nice to show the nice finishing. Yeah. Yeah, well, great. Well, so as far as fit, I mean, what are the things that you look for at this right. stage? So there are, um, there's a few things that are pretty obvious right now. The first main thing we want to do is drop this shoulder a little bit. There's still a little bit more slope than what we cut it for. You've got some drag lines showing up here. And you see that with this opening. Uh, less the opening, more about the drag line from your neck point here down okay. to your armhole. So the cloth is sagging just a little bit there. Okay. So we're going to slope that a little bit or drop that a little bit more than what it is now. If you'll turn a little bit this way. Again, same thing you can see in the back, the drag line's a little bit that the sloping will take care of. Um, the sleeve pitch is really nice. The collar and back is really nice. It's really nice, especially if you have a, um, especially if you have a scarf or something uh, that you wear underneath it, it, it really frames everything really nicely. Mm -hmm. We are going to pinch this car a little bit just to get it grip, just to get a better grip on your neck. Taking in just a little bit in the center seam from about the waist down. Again, we like it a little bit fuller, but it is pushing out just a little bit in the, in the center vent. Vents look good though. Once this is sloped, it's going to be really, really clean coming straight down. Can you turn a little bit more, please? We will probably slope just a little bit to the left, not quite as much as the right, but just to clean up a couple drag lines. 
Um, yeah, there's really not that much to do. I mean, it looks it looks really great. We're going to clean up the shoulder, as I said, take in the center seam a little bit, mm -hmm. shorten this collar, get it to grip your neck a little bit more, take care of the sleeves. They're a little bit long right now. We'll just check the button stance in the mirror here. You'll to keep looking that way. And how do you... Um Position the buttons. So it's a four button front, but you're only Is really like going to be. like a roll to three where you button the second one? and Yeah, so the second and third ones are the ones that you'll be buttoning most. I pretty much only button um, the second one from the bottom, which is basically the waist button. Okay. Um, if it's a little bit cooler or if it's windy, maybe you'll button up to, you know, this one up here, maybe this one up here, depending on how chilly it is. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, you're going to use these two anchor buttons as if they were kind of a single. Uh, waist button on a regular spot okay. jacket. And once we get back to the shop, we'll make sure that these are all evenly spread, about four and a half inches or so apart, but the approximate measurement for here, this is really the key one. The key one, yeah. Okay, does that feel about right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's one of those small details, like with a custom garment, that yeah. makes such a big difference. It, the it, button stance is not in the right place. It is it, so annoying when you wear it. It, it could be three quarters of an inch off, and every time you put a jacket on, if it's different from what you're used to, it's gonna you notice you. it, yeah. and, and it can bother you. Okay, this looks pretty good. Yeah, great, and interior pockets, I mean, again, this is a travel garment, so. Yep, so, you know, passport pocket on one side, it's gonna come up a little bit, well, it's basted shut right now, but mm -hmm. it's gonna come up a little bit, so okay. if you have something taller, you can, um, you know, put it in there, and mm -hmm. it, it slides at the top, and a couple little smaller, um, like cigarette pocket here. Just another breast pocket here. Yeah. Quite simple, pretty standard. Um, it is a travel jacket, but you know we don't want to overload it with pockets either yeah. because it is a, a knit. So yeah, and and I love the. I mean, again, these pockets, you know, for the hands. It's just so, just I mean, just they're so natural. Really easy to wear. So what's the next step? So uh, I'll be in New York and in about a week's time. And Perfect. That'll be great. Yeah, we'll have one more fitting mm -hmm. in New York. Um, you know, basing stitches will be out. We'll have finished it. Um, we'll probably have cut buttonholes and put yeah. on uh, buttons at that point. It's one more thing we could talk about briefly here. Um, we would do probably a, a dark brown horn. Okay. Um, just because a navy horn can be a little bit too similar mm -hmm. since it's a navy uh, jacket. It yeah. can sometimes look like, even though the cut is a little bit different, navy on navy can yeah. kind of look like an orphan suit jacket. Mm -hmm. um, so a dark brown we think is most interesting because it pairs well with jeans, with yeah. you know, khakis, with yeah, great You can work in some brown and then it works with black also. Yeah. Does that feel all right to yeah, you? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so yeah, a natural brown horn button. Again, four buttons on the front. We didn't really talk about this, but we would do two buttons on the sleeve. Okay. Since it's, it is this turn back cuff, mm -hmm. and it's just a little bit more, a little bit of a sporty model that we yeah. think is pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, we'll have the final fitting, take care of any nips and tucks, and from there we'll send it on to you and yeah. for the holidays. Gosh, exciting. This will certainly get a lot of use during the holidays. Great, I'm looking forward to it. Jonathan, hey, thank you so much. Glad to. Yeah, cheers. Mm -hmm.